In this video, we solve problem 15.6.014 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, 7th edition. We're asked to find the mass of the surface lamina S of density rho, and we're told that S is given by z equals the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared, and rho is this function of x, y, and z, which turns out to just be a constant times z. Well, the way that I would solve this is by first sketching this surface. Now, one way that you can sketch this surface is by taking that equation and rearranging it just a little bit so that it looks like um, one of the um, surfaces that we've already studied from that first chapter. So I would take that equation and I would rearrange it by squaring both sides. Oops, it should be a minus. And then adding x squared plus y squared to both sides. So what we have is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. Um, but we're only interested in the part where z is a um, positive number or possibly zero. So um, we have a sphere centered at the origin with radius a and um, z has to be greater than or equal to zero. So it's the top half of that sphere. When x and y are both zero, the z is equal to a. So this is the situation we're in. Now we've got this hemisphere right here. Um, so that's our surface and it's just the top part. It's not the bottom part of that hemisphere. It's just the top part. And we want to find the mass of the surface. Now, in order to do that, we need to set up the equation for the mass. Well, the mass is going to be given by the density, that's mass per unit area times area. But remember, you're talking about a surface area. So this is going to be a ds over here. And that makes it a double integral um, over s. Now, anytime you've got a surface integral like this, you've got to write everything in terms of x, y, and z. So we would take this and first we would write it this way. We know that rho of x, y, and z is just k times z. And then I would, instead of evaluating this integral, I would evaluate an equivalent integral over the region R where R is the projection of this surface onto the x, y plane. So R is this region down here. So I think we're going to be um, well served to write this surface integral as a double integral over R in polar coordinates because um, the region R is so easily described in terms of polar coordinates. Now that requires writing this kz in terms of x, uh, y, and z. It also requires writing our surface area piece in terms of x, or sorry, writing kz in terms of x and y only. And then writing our surface area piece in terms of x and y only. Um, and that can be done pretty easily. Um, z is given by this positive square root of a squared minus uh, x squared minus y squared. So this can be written as k times the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared. And now it's already in terms of x and y only. Then we just have to multiply by the surface area piece. The surface area piece, remember, 
is given by this. It's going to be 1 plus the square root of the partial of z with respect to x squared plus the partial of z with respect to y squared times dA, where dA is the area piece for the region R. So what we really need in order to compute this surface area piece is to find those two partial derivatives and just substitute them in. Well, if z is equal to the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared, the partial of z with respect to x is given by 1 half of that expression to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside with respect to x treating y as a constant. So we'll get a negative 2x there. And that 1 half and the negative 2 will reduce. So we'll end up with a negative x over the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared. And similarly, the partial of z with respect to y is 1 half of that expression to the negative 1 half, just using the chain rule, times the derivative of the inside with respect to x or excuse me, with respect to y, treating x as a constant, so we get a negative 2y there. And the 2 and the 1 half reduce, and we just end up with a negative y in the numerator. Now we're going to take this and this, and we're going to square those. We're going to add 1, and then we're going to simplify, and then we're going to multiply it by that over there. So we have mass is equal to the double integral over r of k times z, which was given by this expression, times the surface area piece, which is 1 plus the partial of z with respect to x squared plus the partial of z with respect to y squared times the area um, dx dy in the xy plane. The partial of z with respect to x is this. And the partial of z with respect to y is this. So you're just going to square the numerator and denominator separately. So that's going to give me an x squared here over a squared minus x squared minus y squared and a y squared over there over the same denominator. So we can add the numerators and keep that common denominator. And this one, I can write as this denominator over itself. Oops. And see what happens when we have that common denominator, these guys reduce, and we just end up with the square root of a squared. square root of a squared is just going to give me an a, and then we're dividing by the square root of a squared minus x squared minus y squared. Now that is really convenient. And that expression for um, z actually reduces, and we end up with the double integral over r of k times a, and then we're just integrating with respect to a or not, not with respect to a, but um, with respect to x and then y, or y and then x, whichever we prefer um, over the region r. Now k and a, lowercase a, are constants. So this is going to actually be k times a times the area of the region r, because that's what this represents. Now I could evaluate this by switching to polar coordinates, but I already know the area of this circle. I know the area of the region r. is just the area of a circle. So it's pi times r squared, and our radius in this case is a. So we're going to have pi times a squared there. So we have k times a times pi times a squared, and we end up with k times pi times a cubed. And that is the mass of this surface lamina, which is like the top half of a sphere, but it's not the solid sphere. 
it doesn't include this this end cap here it's not a volume it's just a surface it's like as if we took a a ball and we just took off the cap of that ball like if you are looking at a basketball and it's covered in leather it's like you're taking off the leather on the top of it and you're saying that that leather piece has a density that depends on the z value i guess as z increases the density increases it's almost zero density at the bottom so it's not very um, dense at all at the bottom and then we add all of that up and it turns out that that density or that, not that density but that mass um, is the integral of the density times the surface area and that's equal to that um, right there 